Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, A.J. Hogue, where A.J.'s more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's A.J. with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. Hi, I'm A.J. Hogue, author of Effortless English, Learn to Speak English Like a Native. Join my VIP program today, now, at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Speak English fluently and powerfully. When you become a VIP member, you become a VIP member at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Commit, don't quit. All right, we're going to finish The Hobbit today, our book club. We're finishing The Hobbit, the last two chapters of The Hobbit. I'll let our live audience join as usual. Bilbo's adventure comes to an end. So remember the uh, last chapter, chapter 17, we discussed how Bilbo was in the battle, the battle of the five armies. And then he was knocked unconscious, right? He's in the middle of the battle. He's got his ring on, but still he gets hit by a rock or something flying in the air and ugh. He goes unconscious, right? Can't kind of like going to sleep. And we're going to do two chapters. There are only two more chapters. We're going to finish the book today. Finishing the book. Chapter um, 18 is called The Return Journey. <laughs> which So you can imagine what that means. It means the, the end of the battle. He's going to wake up and the battle's over. And, uh, and then he's going to go home. All right, let's get started, shall we? The return journey. When Bilbo came to, came to come to means to wake up after being unconscious. He was by himself. So he's all alone somewhere lying on, in, on a hill, right, where the battle was. and But now the battle's over. They've cleared out all the dead. So it's just him laying there by himself. He was shaking and he was cold. He's cold and his head is hurting, right? He sits up and he looks around. He sees no living goblins. And he's he looks around. He sees that there's a camp in the distance. He, he sees that there's some dwarves walking around, doing some work. And of course, he realizes that it's all over. And then he sees a man climbing up kind of the hill near him. And he says, hello. And the man is looking, you know, like, uh, who's there? Right. He doesn't see anybody because his ring is still on. So he takes the ring off. He remembers, oh, yeah, my ring's off. So he takes it off and uh he realizes that uh, the guy sees him and uh, the guy's actually looking for him. Gandalf sent people out to look for Bilbo. He was really worried about him. But because his ring was on, he was invisible, so nobody could find him. That's why. Right? So he had, he says, I'm okay. Uh, but he has a hard, you know, hard hit on his head. So the guy, the man helps him, goes down to the camp. And then he finds Gandalf. Gandalf has his arm is hurt a little bit. And Gandalf is really excited to see him, of course. He says, Baggins, you're alive after all. Yay, I'm glad, right? And then uh, he says, you're called for. And he takes him to a tent. And then inside the tent is Thorin. Thorin, but Thorin has many wounds, right? He's been, he's been hit. He's been injured badly. He's dying, in fact. And re you remember before, Thorin was really, really angry at Bilbo for you know, trying to make this peace deal uh, before the battle. And, uh, but Thorne wants to see him before he dies. So Bilbo goes in and he says, farewell, good thief. You know, I'm dying now. And he says, I wish to part in friendship from you. I take back my words and deeds at the gate. So Thorne basically apologizes. Thorne says, um, because remember, Thorne was so angry at Bilbo before. Um, and he said, basically, I never want to see you again. You know, we're not friends anymore. 
and uh, now he's dying. And of course, after this big battle, Thorin realizes Bilbo was correct. And uh, and of course, they shared so many you know experiences together, and Bilbo helped him out so much. And so this is really good that that as he's dying, Thorin apologizes and and says, you know, let us you know let let us be friends again. I want to die. Uh, I want us to be friends again before I just before I die. And of course, Bilbo, you know, gets on his knees and he's really sad, of course, because he he really cares for Thorin as well. And he says, you know, I'm glad I shared so many adventures with you, Thorin. It's more than I deserve. Thank you so much. And Thorin says, no, there's more in, more in you of good than you know. Some courage and some wisdom blended in measure. So Thorin gives him a very, uh, a very, very, very nice compliment. He says, you know, you're, there's, he can, Thorin, of course, sees what Gil Gandalf has seen and what we all see now that, you know, he says, you have both wisdom and courage, you know, kind of in equal parts. And it's quite, quite amazing. And uh, you're, you're a wonderful person. And he said, you know, if more of us were like you, the world would be better. And then he says, you know, farewell, goodbye. I'm dying, you know, and it's time for him to die. So Bilbo leaves and goes out of the tent and, and Thorin dies soon after. And he, you know, Bilbo cries and he's really upset. And he, and Bilbo feels bad about what he did about the stone, you know, the big diamond and hiding it. And he says, you know, he's kind of angry blames himself he said oh that you you were really foolish you you did that badly so he feels bad he also feels bad a bit um that he you know feels like he could have done maybe uh figured out a better plan and he's you know there was still a battle anyway so then uh so th after thorn dies he goes and he talks to Gandalf and Gandalf tells him what happened during the rest of the battle because of course uh, after he got hit in the head uh, Bilbo doesn't know what happened after that so he just talks Gandalf just tells him the rest of the story you know the eagles came and they start joining the fight but even with the eagles fighting the battle still was very close and um, they were still outnumbered and then Bjorn fight came also so Bjorn shows up into the battle to help the dwarves and the elves and the humans. Bjorn, and this time he's like a big bear. Remember, he can turn into a bear. So he comes as a giant bear and he starts, you know, attacking the the uh, goblins. And he uh, Thorn was surrounded, so he kills a bunch of the goblins and he he saves Thorn, at least saves him, you know, for a while, and uh, and takes him away to save him and uh, kills a whole bunch of goblins. And then finally. The goblins and the, the wolves ran away. They lost the battle. The good guys won. You know, the, the elves and the dwarves and the men and Bjorn and the eagles, they all win. They win the battle, finally. Uh, but, of course, Thorn was injured and, you know, he just died. So then next, you know, uh, there's, you know, he's staying there in the camp a couple days, you know, and he's trying to get where he feels better. They bury Thorin under the mountain and they put the big diamond on his chest, right? The bard puts it on his chest. The, the guy who shot the dragon, they give the diamond to Thorin. They put it in his grave with him. And uh, the elven king get, puts the elven sword on, on him as well when they bury him and then his cousin Dane becomes the king under the mountain the new king under the mountain so of the 12 companions of Thorin the 12 dwarves 10 remained so Thorin died and then Feely and Keely also died the two youngest dwarves were killed uh, defending him and then the, the rest of the, the other 10 dwarves that were with Bilbo they stay with at the mountain to serve the new king all right and so then uh 
the the new king dane you know he's smart he kind of gives the humans you know he gives bard and the men some of the treasure he gives some to the elves for helping in the battle um and then he's uh and then he offers um bilbo he says well of course i we have to give you some of this treasure too he's like we can't give you the full share but we'll give you your full share because i have to give some to these other people but I, I should give you a big reward because you really helped. And uh, and then, you know, we see that Bilbo, again, is not motivated by money at all because Bilbo says, oh, that's nice, but, oh, it's too much. I can't. It's too much to carry. It's too much to carry home. So don't. I don't want so much. Uh, he says, you keep it. You can use it better than I can. So then finally, um, they manage to kind of convince him. They give him two little chests, like little wooden boxes, I guess fairly big wooden boxes of filled with silver and gold. And and they give him a pony, you know, a little horse. And then they said and then he's then it's time to go back. So he's still, ta- you know, he's still going to be rich, but they want to give him like a huge amount of of gold and treasure. And he he's like, ah, oh, no, I don't need it. I don't need it. I don't need it. And then finally, you know, he just he takes they give him a, still a good amount. He's still going to be quite rich from this. He says goodbye to all the dwarves, and then he, he and Gandalf uh, start the journey home. And so the rest of the chapter now is just a description of their journey home, their trip back home. And uh, nothing really too exciting happens. They First they go back on the road with the elves, the elven king, and Bjorn. And then when they get to the forest, they this time they don't go through the forest. When they go back, they go around it to the north. Um, they, the, the elves go into the forest, of course, So, but they travel with Bjorn. And when they say goodbye to the elves, um, this, is, this is another thing that shows his character, that Bilbo's character, how generous and honest he is. Um, he gives a necklace, like it's from his treasure that the dwarves gave him. He gives like a very nice, like kind of expensive necklace to the elven king. He says, please, here, take this as my gift. And uh, the elven king uh, says, "Uh, well, why? Why are you giving me a gift? I haven't earned anything. I didn't do anything. And then Bilbo says, well, actually, you know, when I was, you know, when you captured the dwarves, uh, I was inside your, your castle, invisible, and I ate a lot of your food and I drank your wine secretly. So I just want to say thank you, even though you didn't know I was you were feeding me. And so he gives him the gift. And uh, the Elven King is very impressed by him, you know, by this, because it's a very nice thing to do, very generous. So the Elven King says, you know, you are a, I'm, I give you the title of Elf Friend. You are a friend to the Elves. You will always be a friend of the Elves and the Elves will always be your friends and help you. So very nice. So Bilbo's very good at making friends. <laughs> and then basically they just, they travel back. They, you know, Bjorn, they leave Bjorn. And uh, finally, you know, they start, when it's springtime, they start getting back and close to the summer, they start getting closer and closer until finally the land starts to look familiar. And you remember they had the trolls. Remember the troll, the trolls that were stone, and they had treasure also. And they remember it, so they go and they dig it up, and they get some gold from that too. And again, he's like, "I don't need it. I don't need it." And uh, well, here, I'll, uh, actually, what I'm, I'm jumping ahead. I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. So finally, it says the last stage, the final chapter, the final chapter. So it's May 1st, they come to Rivendell. So that's the other, right? That's where Elrond and the other elves are. And uh, Gandalf talks about, you know, why he had to leave them. He had to go fight the necromancer uh, in the in the forest, which is actually Sauron, which if you guys know from the uh, Lord of the Rings, they fought him and defeated him, not but not permanently. So they hang out in Rivendell for a while, and Bilbo really likes it. He loves the elves there. They're really fun and nice. And then finally, they go on their last road. And then uh, there's just a couple points. Like he's As they're talking, they go back, 
And again, they find the tr this time, like I said, they find the trolls and the treasure. And he says, Gandalf, you should take this treasure from the trolls. I already have a lot. The dwarves gave me all this. I have a lot already. I don't need more. And uh, he's, uh, Gandalf says, okay, yes, I can use it, but still, let's share it. You know, because maybe you'll need it when you get home. So he gives, uh, so they kind of share. They share the treasure from the trolls. Remember, they buried it before. So now Bilbo's actually very, very rich <laughs> because of all this. But as they're going back, you know, Bilbo kind of remembers as they're going backwards, you know, going back towards home, he remembers as they pass different places, he remembers the things that happened, right? And he says, you know, it's it was one year ago, but it seems, it feels more like 10 years, right? And this, this kind of, I highlighted this because this is something I've noticed in my life uh, when I've traveled, when I've gone on new journeys, new trips, that the time seems so full because every day is new, every day is different, every day something unexpected happens, that the, the days are so full that it feels like a lot of time, you know. So I'll give an example. When, I, when we did the Camino de Santiago, it was only a month. It's only about a month, 32 days we walked on there. But it felt like a year. Right at the end of the trip, we look back, and we met so many people. We saw so many new places, so many new experiences, so many interesting days, so many experiences that it felt like it felt like more like a the trip was like a year, but in fact, it was only one month. And so it's kind of the same thing, right? Bilbo has so many adventures. His normal life, right? Nothing much happened. It was pretty boring. And then in this one year, he had so many experiences. That actually, it felt like, it feels like to him that it was 10 years long, the journey. And then finally, they come back and they arrive back in the Shire. And Gandalf says, you are not the hobbit that you were, right? You're not the same person anymore. You have been changed. You are new. You are different. And indeed he is, of course. We know this. And then like a little humor, when they get back, to his house there are all lots of hobbits in his house and they're selling everything they're selling all everything in his house they think he's left they think he died so they're actually having an auction and selling everything and trying to give away all his um all his possessions all his things and they're going to try to sell his house so they said they thought he was dead because he just left suddenly without warning um and so he has to use some of his money to buy back his own stuff. <laughs> uh, but finally, you know, he kicks everybody out. He finally gets most of his stuff back. And it says, uh, in the end, he lost his reputation. Right? So he lost his good reputation because the hobbits, they don't like uh, people who are strange or different or, um, uh, you know, have adventures. So now... Everybody, all the hobbits thought he's kind of weird. He's kind of a strange guy. So that's what he lost, so, you know, but not much. But he gained, but it says he forever, the rest of his life, he was an elf friend, a friend of elves and dwarves and wizards and many other interesting people. So while he lost his, he lost the respect of many of the hobbits in his town, but he gained these incredible new friends and these incredible new uh, experiences. And it says he did not mind. He didn't care, of course. It says he spent, how did he spend all his money? Mostly presents. He mostly would buy gifts for people, especially his nephews and his nieces. He would buy his nephews and his nieces lots of gifts because he wasn't married. And you will again, we know that Frodo, <laughs> in the next book, Lord of the Rings, Frodo is his nephew. And he started writing poetry and visiting elves. And he remained very happy to the end of his days. And those were extraordinarily long. He lived a very long life and very happy to the end of his days. And we actually learn about the end of his days in Lord of the Rings. But we're not going to talk about that here. And then finally, the last little part. Um, later that year, he's at home. He's back to his normal life again. And uh, he's sitting around and there's a knock at his door again. And this time it's Gandalf and a dwarf. It's Balin the dwarf. Balin. 
uh, who's the ba- who's kind of the the dwarf that liked Bilbo the most. And uh, he gets a little bit of news. Like they talk about their old, their adventures. They kind of talk about the past, what happened. He, uh, he, Balin tells him everything's fine in the mountain. The town of the humans is doing well. And uh, the dwarves are doing well. Everything's great. And now the elves are their friends also. Everything's so, you know, everything's going well. And then Bilbo, let's see. They talk about there was, you know, basically Bilbo says, well, it came true, right? The prophecies, the the people were saying that everything would be good again. And it did. It happened. And uh, Gandalf says something interesting. He says, you don't think that all of your adventures and your escapes were happened only by luck, just for your benefit. He says, you are a very fine person, Mr. Baggins. I'm very fond of you. I like you a lot but you're quite a little fellow, quite a little person in the world. And Bilbo says, thank goodness, and laughs. So what is he talking about? Basically, Gandalf is saying that some kind of help from, you know, we could say, he doesn't say it directly, but some kind of divine help, spiritual help from God, from Dharma. Uh, He's basically saying, you know, Bilbo, you were not just lucky. You are being helped somehow, right? Some power, some higher power uh, was helping you in your adventures, was helping you in your escapes. Um, And not only to help you, but because to help this whole situation, right? To help all the elves and the dwarves and the humans to help, to help defeat the dragon. You know, this, this huge adventure that was quite important. You know, you are part of it. And, you know, when you become part of something great like that, if you are good and true, then you will get help, right? So he was basically getting divine help, spiritual help. And Bilbo says, yes, you're right. I'm just a small person. I'm glad I had that help. And that's the end of the book. The end. Okay, we'll go in. If you have any questions or comments to finish up The Hobbit, the book, we can do them, and then we are done. So another book finished, another book. This was our fiction book this time, finished. So next we will um, we'll do a nonfiction book, of course. will be our next book. I don't know which one yet. I have no idea. I, I haven't decided. I have a list of some suggestions, and I'll have to think about it. If you have ideas for a nonfiction book, you can send me on my Gab, gab.com, AJ Hogue. Uh, and make a suggestion, and I'll think about it. Now, as always, when we finish a book, I like to take a break for a few weeks and uh, as and then think about something, you know. Uh, think about the next book, just take a little break, and then we'll wait and see. Okay, Alana Khan says, uh, Thich Nhat Hanh wrote about the seeds of good and bad power in ourselves. We need to water the right seeds. Bilbo, at the end of the journey, became a real leader. Honest, brave, and courageous. Indeed. So, yeah, we could think about that, that he had that courage, that wisdom, these seeds. Think about them like seeds inside him. And then it's like they kind of grew from the situation. They grew and came out. And he became, and indeed, a real leader, a real hero. Yeah, like Christy, this is the quote from Thorin. If more of us valued food and cheer and song above gold, it would be a merrier world, a happier world, says Thorin. So Thorin kind of realizes in the, at the end that his craziness for the gold and the diamond, he realizes that it was foolish, right? And he realizes that Bilbo was right, that, you know, just happiness and good food and... and, and Good company, you know, friends. These are the things that are more important than gold. Quite nice. Okay, I'm just looking back at some of the earlier, see if we had any comments. It looks like people were just listening.
Okay. All right, I'll give it time for a couple more questions or comments if you have them. And if not, then we will finish early and we'll be done with the book. The next week, we should continue our movie club. Yeah, that's a good idea. We should get back to our movie club, right? Asma says, when you have a difficult, when you have difficulties during the journey, uh, when you save and return to your home, you, you have this feeling that you achieve something big and confident to do anything you want. Absolutely. I can relate to this. You know, I, I can remember back to my very first journey. Of course, I'm not, not dragons and gold and stuff, obviously, but my first time to travel outside of my home, outside of America. I went to India for two months uh, alone and just wandered around northern India. And uh, yeah, I can relate exactly right that, you know, I had a lot of adventures, <laughs> uh, good and bad experiences, challenges, difficulties, all kinds of things. Very interesting, all of it. And uh, when I came back, I also was different. It made me a, a much different person, much more confident, like Bilbo in a way, because I had to face all these things alone. It was my first time doing something like that all alone. And um, I exactly what Ozma said. I came back and I had this feeling of, you know, again, it was two months. This trip was two months, but it felt like two years to me. It felt like I had lived the experiences of two or more years. So many new experiences. And it was a huge, huge, huge change in my life. It changed my life. At, at the, my whole life changed after that. Uh, you know, my what I decided to do, the kind of life I decided to live, all kinds of things changed after that. So yes, these kind of experiences, when you really go outside your comfort zone and challenge yourself and do something big like that, then indeed your whole life can change quite a lot, even in a short time. And of course, the big change happens inside. Yeah, Bido, uh, Bidola says, Bilbo in the beginning is a very simple person with simple needs. After the journey, he didn't change this about his character. That is also true. Yes. Now, you know, many things did change. He became more courageous, stronger, more confident heroic in many ways but on the other hand you're right that like these good characteristics the fact that he was simple and kind and not greedy um still the same after all that and he gets all that money um didn't really care too much about it he took the money you know and he he becomes quite rich but he could have had a lot more didn't care about it and yeah that's he he, he remains quite simple and happy and satisfied. He stays focused on those important things. Yeah, it's also a good point. It's one of the nice things about Bilbo, what makes him a great character. Yeah, Ilana Khan with a nice comment. There's This is a good message for all of us from Gandalf. Fate or God will never do all the work for anyone. They guide and help us but the hard work is ours. It's the way to success. Yes. Thoreau has a really nice quote about this also. Quote Thoreau about that when you act boldly, right? When you when you let go fear and you move forward with some uh, courage that I think that he says basically God or the universe conspires, tries to help you, right? Not going to do everything for you. No, but that you will get help that you didn't expect. You'll find courage when you that you didn't expect. You'll find strength inside yourself that you didn't expect. Um, sometimes, you know, lucky things will happen that you didn't expect. You'll get help from other people that you never imagined and didn't expect. But you have to be courageous first. You have to take that, those actions first, just like Bilbo had to go out the door and he had to keep doing all those things. And he got help, just a little bit of help along the way. Like Ahmad Salim says, the divine power is sent to those who patiently persevere, who patiently keep going. Right, that's what he does.
Baran says, I think the Lord of the Rings novels are better than the Hobbit novel. What do you think? Uh, well, the Lord of the they're very different. The the Lord of the Rings books, the three books, are uh, are much more serious, and the Hobbit is is very much a, a light, a very light introduction to. They're not meant to be the same kinds of books. The Hobbit is more of a light adventure, something that you know, easy for children or adults to enjoy. Has some more humor, a little, a little funny, you know, funny parts. Can't uh, Bilbo's a little funny in times, right? Because he, he is kind of a simple, such a simple guy. I mean, there's serious parts in the book also, but but uh, it's it's overall a very light book compared to uh, Lord of the Rings is quite serious, uh, more like literature, really. So I don't, I, don't, I wouldn't necessarily use the word better, but for quite different, more serious, more deep, probably more artistic for sure. Lord of the Rings. Yeah, Alana Khan with a MLK quote. The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands. I forgot I can add these to the chat. Uh, in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge. Right, that's when your character is tested during the challenging times, not when everything's easy. Vladislav says, The book shows everybody we can become a hero. We don't need to have a superpower. We are stronger than we think we are. Yeah, one of the main messages of the book, for sure. Bilbo's not a superhero, not a superpower in any way. Very much uh, a normal person in terms of his strength and, and power. Very much. Maybe even less. He's a little weak, actually. <laughs> Uh, okay, getting some books. Space Odyssey by Kubrick. Well, Kubrick is the movie. I don't know. Uh, Arthur C. Clarke wrote the book, I believe. Okay. Yeah, someone is uh, mentioning Bernadine having lunch in Osaka sometime. Yes, for sure. Just give me some, just contact me on Gab. Give me some warning before you come. <laughs> Richard says, the point is to keep going. It's one of the points for sure. Is Lord of the Rings on the list for the book club? Asked Ladislav. No, it's too much. <laughs> I, I like to stay with books that are a little shorter and simpler. And Lord of the Rings is just huge. Uh, and the language in the Lord of the Rings is very tough. It's, it's, it is actually, it's more difficult, meaning more the, just the vocab, uh, the style, I think is too much, uh, for us to do, honestly. Man's Search for Meaning is on my list for nonfiction. Tanishka White says, we always must be thanks, thankful to God for people that he sends to support us in our life challenges. Right. Exactly. The many ways that we are supported if we really think about it. Exactly right. Yeah, like uh, Abdullahi Osman says, you can't know your capability until you do something you're not sure you can do. You have to face the reality uh, and become and get under pressure, right? Most of us underestimate ourselves. That's right, because most of us never really test ourselves. So we never know our own strength. We never know our own courage. We just, we're always being too safe, too afraid. So we never find out, right? Most people just stay in their comfortable home and they never leave. They, you know, metaphorically mean they don't do it. She says, why did Bilbo lose the respect of his neighbors? Because he didn't just live a normal, safe life. He took chances. He took risks. This is true in life. People, normal people who are afraid, who just live normal lives, they kind of, uh, they, they might criticize you. They might criticize you if you go doing, uh, you know, 
crazy, difficult, scary things. If you do, if you're different, right? If you're different than normal people, if you're different than most people, they will, I don't know, lose respect or they, or they criticize you. It happens. Hmm. Let's see. Maybe an autobiography for the next book club. Maybe. And Dale Carnegie, also a good um, suggestion. Anis. Aniso says, to be a hero, you have to fight. Right, you have to get into the fight. You have to get into the action, right? That's the only way, right? It's like to, and, and this goes along with some of our topics uh, from the last week, which is that if you just hide, if you're just afraid, then you will do nothing, right? So if it's in business, you think about joint, you're thinking about, you know, you're a business and you want to start your own business. Well, if you never start your own business, right, you never become a hero. You there, you'll never be successful if you don't start. Impossible. You won't. You'll never succeed if you don't start. Right. Exactly right. Exactly right. Vladislav says normal people are just afraid of doing something unusual. They, and they never will. It's much easier to criticize those who do unusual things. Exactly right. That's most people. Get used to it. That's most people. And in the end, who cares? Like Bilbo doesn't care when he comes back. Why would he care? After all of that, does he care what these, these kind of simple hobbits think of him? Of course not. He doesn't care at all. Okay. Thanks to hard times, says Amat Slim, you figure out your relationship with God and other people also. You des whether you deserve help or not, just to analyze your status in life. Right, again, you're tested. You become more clear about things in life when you face these challenges, these adventures, these difficulties, when you're different. And you go against everybody else, what most people are doing. Then you learn a lot about yourself. For sure you do. You find your strengths. You find your weaknesses. It's just an amazing thing. I just feel sorry for people. I feel bad for people who never do that. Because they never, they never become what they could be. It's kind of sad. Yeah, like Yusufian puts it this way, our real ability will be shown in difficult situations. Such abilities we cannot believe. Right. If, if, if we are courageous. And sometimes in difficult situations, people just hide like, you know, this virus thing is now suddenly over. Isn't that amazing? Just disappeared. <laughs> and now there's something new. Um, so... But, you know, people just hide and, and are afraid and just watching the news all the time. It's so sad. They, they never find out. But the people who go, who think, who stand up, who show some courage, they find something inside them and they become like Bilbo. They become different people, better people, stronger people, happier people. I mean, it says we should ignore those who criticize us. Right, just ignore them, especially small people, small, fearful people who criticize you. Who cares what they think? Why would you care what those people think? That's insane. It's crazy. Okay, I think we're about finished. The ultimate goal is not to be rich, says Osman. It's helping others, regardless of the rewards. Living an adventurous life gives us a different taste for our life. True happiness comes from the inside. We can see that with Bilbo, right? For sure.
All right, that is all for today, guys. We finished another book, a very good book, a book that I quite love, The Hobbit. Now, as always, I encourage you to read this book yourself in English. Uh, now that you have listened to the videos, if you haven't, go back and uh, on my podcast or YouTube or whatever, and you can listen to all the videos where I tell you the whole story and describe what happens. So then you'll have a very clear idea of the main story, the main action, the main characters. That will help you understand the book much more easily. So then your next step is tr try to read it in English. Try to read it in English. When you read it in English, I recommend read an ebook, right? Electronic version. Why? Because you can look for the meaning of the words. Let me show you on my screen, just an example. It's very easy to look up words. You can use a translation. You can use whatever dictionary you want. Like I've got Kindle, but whatever reader you want, it doesn't matter. But let's say, um, okay, so here I am in the book. And let's say here's this word, prophecies. I don't know what it means. So I'm in an ebook. I just double click it and boom, the dictionary pops up. Prophecy, right? A prediction. There you go. Right? Gives you, gives, now this, this is an English dictionary, but it gives me the meaning. I just double click it. What does prophecy mean? Oh, it means a prediction. Okay, boom. And then just go back and continue reading. It's so fast, so fast with an ebook. You don't have to, you know, to, to go to something else and look it up. It's not so slow. And if you want, you can change the settings on your ebook reader and you could use a translation dictionary instead. Right, see, I just click on here. If you're watching on my screen, uh, let's see if you can see it. There's this little settings thing, and it gives me a list of all the dictionaries that I have in my Kindle, all the dictionaries I have available. So this is the new Oxford American Dictionary right now, but I could switch over to, you know, there's a French one here, there's a, there's a Spanish one, here's an Italian one, Japanese, whatever. Um, so you could do that too. So you could instead, so then when you double click a word, it would uh, give you the translation in your own language instead. If that's easier for you, that's totally fine also. But that's why I recommend when you read the book, do it with an ebook. Because then as you're reading, just click on words you don't know really quickly, see the meaning, got it, and then just keep reading. You don't, don't try to memorize it. Just, just see the word, get the meaning, and keep going and just you know, understand the whole story. Yes, you'll probably forget the meaning. It's okay. You might see the word again and again and again. So don't worry. Just keep going. And then you can read through this entire book in English. And then if you like, you could get the audio book and then listen to the whole thing. That would be a great way to get a lot of great English uh, improvement, English input, uh, from this book. So you do my book, all do all the book club videos with me, getting the main ideas. Then you read the whole book yourself in English, ebook. Then you listen to the audiobook. And in that way, you'll learn quite a lot from The Hobbit. And you can do that with every book that we do. All right, that's all for now, guys. Lots of love to you. As always, join my VIP program at effortlessenglishclub.com. And uh, we'll start a new book in a few weeks. Lots of love to you. See you next time.